It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Morality is something that constantly evolves. The morality of today is very different than morality from 50 years ago. And the morality from 50 years ago is completely different than the morality in the past and that past and so on and so forth. So the main point what I'm trying to say here is that when you have morality in a different time period, the art that actually reflects the time period in society is going to be very different than the artwork or whatever kind of media you consume is going to be reflective of that. And it doesn't make any type of sense to me to just judge an old book or old movie or whatnot based upon the standards of today and then to go to censor something based upon your personal standards is the greatest form of censorship there is. And so for this video, we're going to talk about two stories in regards to censorship. James Bond books edited to avoid offense to modern audience. James Bond has been censored, not stirred. <laughs> A report indicates that Ian Fleming's James Bond books have been rewritten to accommodate 21st century sensibility, removing a number of racial references ahead of the 70th anniversary this spring, the Sunday Telegram reported. The books are expected to be published in April. Fleming thrillers from Casino Royale to Octopussy will be re-released this spring after Ian Fleming Publications, the company that owns the literary rights to Fleming's works, commissioned a review by sensitivity readers. For those who have no idea what they mean by racial insensibility things in the book, I'm going to read an exact quotation from a book, that way you guys have a clear understanding what they're talking about. And I'm not necessarily, you know, caring about the money or monetization of my channel at all. And so I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I'm just care about information and truth. And so without further hesitation, let's read a page out loud together. This is a quotation that comes directly from Dr. No about the three blind men. Just before 615, the silence of Richmond Road was softly broken. Three blind beggars came around the corner of the intersection and moved slowly down the pavement towards the four cars. There were two Negroes, Chinese Negroes, bulky men, but bound as they stuff along, trapping at the curb at their white sticks. We need to really remember the time period in which this book was written down. Largely, because back then, even among black people, it was actually quite common to call black people Negroes to other black people. And so it was not just like, you know, white people that did that, but it was also black people that also did that too. Even Martin Luther King back then used Negroes to refer to, of course, other black people. And so the language and how things were used back then is completely different in comparison to right now. Because as language evolves, the words and meaning for things also evolve. And so to judge what they said back then in comparison to today, again, does not make any type of sense in the slightest at all. Roald Dahl's book get edited for language deemed offensive, words like crazy and fat remove. Publisher Puffin Books and imprint of Penguin Books had edited Roald Dahl's book in effort to reflect a more inclusive language. Titles like James and the Giant Peach, Matilda, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory has been altered by modifying works that are now deemed offensive. In a statement to the Telegram, Puffin said the changes were made so that the books can continue to be enjoyed by all today. For example, the character Augustus Gloop from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is no longer referred to as fat and now described as enormous. The Oopa Loopas are gender neutrals and no longer refer to them as small men, but are now small people. I feel very fortunate that things like Internet Archive actually exist. And the main reason why I say this is imagine yourself looking at this news for the first time and that there is no such thing as Internet Archive. That will mean that the original copies of those books will forever be gone largely because it'd be either too expensive to get or that you cannot find the original copies at all. 
Because honestly, if that was the case, I would be absolutely mortified by that fact. But I'm pretty sure, very, very sure, that one day the internet archive will be ceasing to exist and that would mean like millions upon millions of books and their original copies are ceased to be remembered by those who enjoy the books. And that to me is a very scary thought. I think it's very important, very, very important to know and tease people that things from the past does not reflect the ideas of today and because they do not reflect the ideas of today, that's why they have things that we consider to be inappropriate. And right now, the stuff that we're doing right now might be considered inappropriate in the future. And I don't think that anybody will want their work censored based upon the sensibility in the future. And so I think it's really, really important to actually preserve the original copies of things and not censor stuff just because of our sensibility. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I want to trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.